Hello friend, this is Rupesh and watching CPU Nerds video series on C++ and in this video we will be learning about static data member of classes in C++. So before this video, you saw normal data members, how they behave. So if you have not my, watched my previous video, please go ahead and watch that one and then you come and watch this one. So let me just write one class, let's call this class a base class and if you are creating one integer x and static integer y just these two data members first is integer x another one is integer y but this y is of static type so let's try to understand why we create static and what is the meaning of this one so if some data type like this is static then it will be common for all the objects let's suppose this is not there for now and you are creating some object of this base class then how it would look like you are having this base b and b dot x is equal to you can say 10 and you can have this base b2 and b2 dot x can be 20 and if now you are printing b1 dot x and another one is b2 dot x then these two will be different okay let's make it be one here and be one here so we all know that we saw that in a previous video that b1 dot x is 10 and b2 dot x is 20 and we know that if you have created an object of this class then this x will be different different for each and every object so if you will run this let's run this answer will be 10 and 20 so this x is totally different than this x okay i mean b1's x is totally different than b2's x because this is normal variable i mean normal data member but now let's look at this static data member if i will uncomment this and stop here this is little different what happens in normal case when you create a class and you write data members of that and you create object of that and automatically this x will get created because this x is a normal data member and memory was created for this when you created this b1 here but that is not the case with static data members because static data members are not part of your object they will be common in all the object so this y will be a common thing i'll show you how and yes if it is not belonging to each and every object differently then the memory creation i mean if you have this integer y here then you must have to create memory for this in order to store any value inside this right so the syntax for memory creation is like this you have to create outside of the class like this like what is the type of this one that is integer where is this y variable this y variable is inside base so you will write like this base scope resolution operator y and semicolon okay so this is how you will define it i'm telling you again this integer x is a normal data member so there is no need to create memory for this like this okay because when you will create an object this integer x will get created automatically inside this okay i mean for this but that is not the case with this static variable this static variable will be common for all the objects so who will create the memory for this one so this is the syntax for writing and getting the memory for your y here so for now you just understand that this is the declaration part and this is the definition part in normal variables i mean data members you don't have to do this because this x will be different for b1 and different for b2 but this y is going to be common for b1 and b2 and b3 and all the objects of base class so there is no way that who will create that memory that memory should belong to b1 or b2 or b3 or b10 no there is no way of telling that so as it is only going to be single memory we get it like this and one more thing i wanted to tell if you are having this 
.h and .cpp file and generally what we do we write the class declaration inside .h file and all those functions definition inside .cpp file so if you are confused where should we write this one then you should write this one in .cpp file okay not .h file because dot h file will get included here and there maybe two three times four times then this will get copied here and there four five times and you will have multiple definition problem so if you didn't understood what they just said then don't worry about that that is little higher stuff and if you are a pure junior it will take little time no no worries i am there for you so normal variables nothing is required static variable you have to define it okay now let's do some magic here enough talk let's do some experiments do one thing b1 dot y is equal to 30 and b2 dot let's come here and b2 dot y is equal to 40 and let's just print b1 dot y and print b2 dot y you will get the real picture of this one see both are 40 and 40 because what happened this y as it is single memory let me just draw this so how it is looking like is like this you have this base class inside this you have x and you have this y why i am drawing this because this memory is common for all the objects and let's make these objects like b1 b2 b3 and here you selected x is equal to 10 here you selected x is equal to 20 and here you selected y is equal to 20 then y is equal to 30 but this y is common for each and every object here so when you will change y it will reflect that changed value to each and every object so let's suppose object 1 is setting y is equal to 20 then 20 will come here and after some time object 2 is setting y is equal to 30 then this will become 30 so if object 1 is going and checking this value object 1 will get 30 here and that's what happening here b1 dot y is set as 30 initially then we created b2 b2 x was set so this 20 was here but b2 dot y was set to 40 and this is this location so it will be like 40 here b1 will get that y after initializing the new value b1 will also get the new value okay because there is only one place for y and different different place for x okay so if you are choosing b1 dot x is equal to 10 and b2 dot x is equal to 20 they will be different x but this y is common for all the objects okay so let's just simply run all these things so b1 dot x and here we can write b2 dot x okay and let's see what is the output of this one 10 40 20 40 see b1 dot x x is initialized with 10 and here x is initialized with 20 so x is retaining its value because x is different for b2 and b1 but y was initialized 30 before but later it was initialized with 40 so we will get the updated value because there is only one position no matter what object you are using to change that position okay that's why you are getting this one here so up to now you understood that only one place is there in the memory where you access that location using any of the object like this but there are other ways to access this data member and that other way is you can just simply write the name of the class like this so your class name is base 
so you can write base y here and here also you can write base y okay so if you'll compile this now it will tell you the same thing here see it is 10 40 20 40 but you cannot do that base y with this base x because this x belongs to b1 object but this y belongs to a global area that's why it is called they are the attribute of classes not the object normal data members are the attributes of objects but static data members are the attributes of the classes and you have only one class so you will have only one variable for that so that's why you can access y like this also whereas you cannot access x like this you have to point which x you are talking about because x is depending on the objects correct so this was about how to access data member of your class outside now there is another thing so if this is static data member there is a function which is static so let's look at that function now so if you want to create some function static function then you have to write it like this static print y and you can print y here okay and you have to give the return type also so this is how you create a function which is static function so if you have not seen what is static function let's try to understand that so before that let me write a non-static function so void print x and inside this yes you guessed correctly you are going to print x here okay and let me just simply remove all these things and call b1 dot print x and b2 dot print x or make it like b1 dot print y and b2 dot print y so we are printing x and y of objects here so let's just simply print them and we'll see that later this is giving you the exact output how you was getting before but now what is the difference here the difference is this function is a static function so this function can access only static data member this is the difference don't forget this if your function is static function then it can access only static data member of class and if your function is a non-static member function then it can access both if you will write y inside this print x there won't be any problem but you cannot write x inside this static one okay so just take a look of that just try to write x here and we'll compile it and you will get the error invalid use of member base x in static member function so your compiler is telling you that it is not allowed now try to do the similar thing here you can write y here and compile it will compile see 10 40 40 20 40 40 so remember this static member function can only access static data members and non-static member functions can access static or non-static both okay and yeah one more thing is there till now we was calling this print y using this object but there is no need to call this print y using this object you can call like this also this is like base scope resolution operator similarly here base scope resolution operator and if you'll run this you will get the similar output let me just remove this one okay run this again 10 40 20 40 so to summarize this let's create one diagram here let's make this one as base you have this x here and this is y let me draw this box here which will show that y is having only single memory and let's have this b1 object here and b2 object here okay and this x will have memory here and another x which is of this b2 will have memory here but if you have y here and y here this y 
is pointing to this location and this pointing to this location. So both are pointing to the same location here. But this x are different. So if you will write 10 here, then you can write 20 here. This is not overlapping each other. But if you will write 10 here, it means you are going to write 10 here. And if you want to write 20 now, you will be replacing that 10 with 20. Okay. So as this y is not specific to the objects, you can access this y using class name like this base scope resolution operator is equal to 10. This is allowed for static data members and there is something called static member functions. So if this is static member functions, it can only access static data member. And as usual, if it is static, you can access that using your class name. Okay. So base print y. This is perfectly legal code. And why it is working? Because this is not bound to the objects. And this print x is bound to the object because this is a non-static member function. Okay. And I think we are pretty much clear now. And if you are interested in constant data members so let me write that here constant then what happens so for that you please watch my next video because this video has already become so big and that constant thing is really very important there are so many types of data members right okay i can get that no problem you will get it because there was a day when i started learning c plus plus and i know it was not easy so it won't be easy for you as well but for me there was no youtube and all but for you, there are a hell lot of resources available. So if you want to know what is constant integer or constant character or whatever, watch my next video. So if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go for it. It would help you a lot. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.